Years in Bastille Day Parade, he does something awesome. Obama would never do this. President Donald J. Trump and First Lady Melania visited Paris today, to celebrate Bastille Day with French President Macron, his spouse, and whole French nation. This visit was also dedicated to celebrating 100-year anniversary of American soldiers joining France in WWI. During this year celebration, President Trump and his wife Melania, are invited as guests of honor. Today was a great day for the parade. A large number of French citizens, maybe tens of thousands, were lined on the streets of the Champs-Élysées from L'Arc de Triomphe to Place de la Concorde. President Trump is surely one of the greatest admirers of our military, and he truly loves his country. We can see his patriotic feeling and pride in his eyes when American troops approached close by on Grand Parade. And you must see what he did. That's correct, he shows his respect by saluting our troops. And he doesn't do this as a part of a ritual, but to show his respect and honor to men and women of our military. Most of the media just showed a brief shot of President Trump saluting, as he was putting his hand down. As a matter of fact, the president held his salute until all the troops were passing by. This is amazing. Please share this post on Facebook if you support Trump. What is your opinion on this? Scroll down to comment below. What Laura Ingraham just did for Trump will guarantee he's re-elected. Steve Bannon just gave the funny reason Sean Spicer is not in front of the cameras anymore, it was a joke but the liberals still win all Looney Tunes. Bannon said Sean Spicer gained too much weight so Trump doesn't want him on TV. In truth, White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer has actually been promoted and he is currently looking for his own replacement in the White House spokesman. We all know Sarah Huckabee Sanders has been doing a great job and her role is secure but that will not stop the massive shakeup coming to the White House communications team. Just recently, as the Washington Post exclusively reported, Sean Spicer and White House Chief of Staff Reince Priebus officially reached out to Fox News host and conservative radio superstar Laura Ingraham to inquire about her interest in taking the role of press secretary. And it looks like she will accept. Laura Ingraham has long been under serious consideration for this job, almost from the day Trump won the election. She rebuffed those early attempts after Trump for a couple of reasons but mainly she didn't want to take a pay cut. Laura can't stand watching the bungling from the White House communication team. And after Melania, Ivka, and Jared all came out publicly and told President Trump to make some major moves to this team it looks like he will and Laura may be the one to sort out the mess. Look it is a hard job but getting the messaging right is critical to any president's success. So the constant mistakes and leaks are really doing a disservice to President Trump. When voters, even liberal voters, actually hear what Trump is doing he will win re-election in a landslide. That is why Laura, who will destroy the liberal media narrative and get the real facts out there, will basically guarantee Trump wins re-election. Share this if you know Laura Ingraham will help Trump ruin the liberal media and easily cruise to re-elect. Dem Rep. Lewis 2016 election was rigged in Trump's favor. Rep. John Lewis, R. Georgia, accused President Trump of being uncaring and unappreciative of the civil rights movement on Friday, saying the president knows very, very little about the struggle for equal rights. I think the person we have in Washington today is uncaring, he said in an episode of CNN's The Axe Files set to air Friday night. Trump, knows very, very little about the struggle and the history of the civil rights movement. In an interview with Democratic strategist and CNN analyst David Axelrod, Lewis, a civil rights icon who marched alongside the likes of Martin Luther King Jr., said that while the U.S. has made progress toward equal rights, that progress could be at risk. We have come a distance. We made progress, he said. But there are forces in America trying to slow us down or take us back. Lewis has spoken critically of Trump in the past, saying days before his inauguration that he did not consider Trump to be a legitimate president, because of the intelligence community's conclusion that Russia sought to influence the 2016 presidential election in Trump's favor.
he repeated that assertion in his interview with Axelrod, saying that he still believes that this election was rigged to help Trump. Lewis also slammed Attorney General Jeff Sessions, whom Lewis said has a history of standing against equal rights. I know his record, I know his history, he has a very long history of being on the other side and not on the right side, Lewis said. Breaking down Senator's nasty deal with Mexico exposed. Joe Donnelly is a Democrat senator from Indiana. The senator is also a businessman, and above all else, he is a wholly hypocritical liberal. The Washington Examiner reported that Donnelly earns approximately $50,000 a year in dividends from his family business that outsources jobs to Mexico. You might be a little uneasy that he is taking jobs away from hardworking Americans, but that isn't the worst part. Joe just so happened to throw a fit when a company called Carrier sent jobs to Mexico to save money on labor. It doesn't end there. Donnelly also opposed the North American Free Trade Agreement, which seems like an odd thing to fight when you are padding your pockets off of the labor of the Mexican people. This is what Donnelly had to say regarding the NAFTA, outsourcing is just a fancy term for someone in Indiana has just lost their job. Oh, that is just rich, Joe. You want to criticize people for taking jobs away from your hard-working state, but you have no qualms about taking away jobs when you are the one doing it. His state voted for Trump over Clinton by a staggering 20 percent. We don't think that there is a good chance for his re-election in 2018. His antics go further than his hypocrisy on outsourcing. Joe also goes out of his way to bad-talk Trump every opportunity he gets. That kind of childish behavior coupled with nothing to support the nonsense coming from his mouth is shredding his chances of winning in 2018. The icing on the cake is that this is the same guy who decided it would be a grand idea to fundraise off of Obamacare when half of the insurers in his state picked up and moved out to get away from the health care exchanges. If he wants to win the election, he better start praying now. The odds of him getting enough support to stick around even with loyalists fighting for him, are slim. He is going to need a miracle. Now we can all see Joe Donnelly for what he is a hypocrite who will lie to make himself look good politically. In his business operations, he is all about sending work to Mexico so he can make $50,000 a year. It is shameful. You would think he would be trying to find new ways to build new jobs in the community interact with the people who are supposed to re-elect him and make himself look like an honest person. Instead, he is just making a mockery of himself and his party. It won't be long before election day comes and all the hard workers in Indiana show him what happens to hypocrites in Indiana. What do you think about this comment below? Crowds cheer POTUS Trump at U.S. Women's Open We Love You Mr. President Bedminster, N.J., President Trump made history as the first sitting U.S. president to attend the U.S. Women's Open. President Trump rolled up to a cheering crowd as he exited his motorcade, waving to fans. People were screaming, We love you Mr. President. N.J. reports, Trump got to the course at 3.40 p.m. Friday, fresh off a trip to Paris for Bastille Day ceremonies. After Air Force One landed at Newark Liberty International Airport, the president's motorcade headed for Bedminster and drove through the heart of Trump National, past a crowd of fans near the Pudding Green and the clubhouse. Trump could be seen waving out the window as the motorcade rolled by, then headed for his home on the property, which sits adjacent to the 15th hole. Less than two hours later, Trump made the short trek to the skybox that's been built behind the 16th tee, receiving cheers and applause along the way. He occasionally wandered toward the box's windows to point and wave to fans, while the Secret Service and USGA officials handled crowd control outside the box. USGA officials repeatedly asked the crowd to keep quiet in order to avoid disrupting play, which was taking place just yards away. President Trump exited his motorcade to a cheering crowd. People went wild capturing pictures and video of the president as he smiled and waved to everyone. The Secret Service had to keep quieting the crowd down because they were so excited.